The uh, Republican Weekly Radio Address was delivered this week by Representative Bill Cassidy. Now, he's a doctor, and also, along with being a representative in Congress, and he had some interesting, yet not surprising things to say about Obamacare. And if you've been living under a rock, this is in the Supreme Court, and they're expecting a ruling on it sometime this week. Starting off, this first clip, he was listing all the problems Obamacare is causing, and this is his solution for those problems. The only way to change this is by repealing Obamacare entirely. So, there we go. The idea is to repeal this disastrous uh, law entirely. Here is the storyline, the Republican, for the pub, for, uh, if I can get talking here, this this really cuts to the core and this uh, this really unconstitutional law just drives me crazy so if i start getting frustrated you'll know why but here is the storyline for the republican solution should the supreme court not throw out the entire law this week this is what they're putting out so unless the court throws out the entire law we should repeal what is left and implement common sense, step-by-step -step reforms that protect Americans' access to the care they need from the doctor they choose at the lowest cost. So they're going to implement common sense, step-by-step -step reforms that protect Americans' access to the care they need with a doctor they choose at the lowest cost. Hey, big government types, what you are describing is the free market. That would give the Americans the care they need with a doctor they choose at the lowest cost available. Is it me or how hard is that to understand? And in this next clip, he even makes the case for this very thing with this next point. Healthcare coverage has become too expensive for too many people. It is too expensive. It's too expensive because you have the government involved, which is distorting the market and running the costs up for everybody. But don't worry. The Republicans are not going down this same road. It's important to know that Republicans will not repeat Democrats' mistakes. Good health care starts in a doctor's office, not a Washington back room. Wow. That sounds, almost sounds like the Republicans might be starting to get a handle on this problem. Maybe they are starting to realize government is the problem and not the solution. It's now clear, if it wasn't already, that containing costs step by step, not expanding government in one fell swoop, is the right approach to health care reform. Oops, spoke too soon. Apparently, the Republicans are going to contain costs step by step and not expand government in one fell swoop. But be clear, they're going to expand government, just not all at one time, but step by step. Families should be able to make their own health care choices, visit the doctor of their choosing, and receive the health care they and their physician feel is best. So again, if my health care decisions are being made by me and my doctor alone, then it sounds like we're back to the free market. But it is what is left out that most people miss. And incidentally, why you listen to this radio show, because you know I'll catch it. The sales pitch they are giving you is your health care decisions will be made by you and your doctor. But who is doing the health care payments? Why, it will be the government, of course. And what do you think is going to happen when the government starts running low on money to pay for all this health care? It is going to take those decisions that you and your doctor have been making and hand them to some bureaucrat in Washington to make for you. For a little glimpse into this, you can listen to this next clip. That means implementing patient-centered solutions that lower cost and restore Americans' freedoms over their health care decisions. See, we are implementing solutions. Why would they need to do that if they are handing all of those decisions back to us? If they were going to get the government out of health care, then they would have no reason to be implementing anything. But passing an alternative big government program will be a little tricky because we have been burned on this Obamacare. So here is the plan. We should seize this opportunity to protect jobs and work together on a step-by-step -step reform that will do what Obamacare did not do, which is to lower the cost of health care for families and small businesses. So they're going to seize the opportunity 
under the guise of protecting jobs. Only by passing their version of health care reform are we going to protect jobs. And again, he used that term step-by-step reform, which just means they're going to strip away your freedom a little at a time instead of across the board like Obamacare was going to do. See, the Republicans are looking out for you. Instead of smacking you across the face with taking away your freedom and choice, they are going to do it little by little so it doesn't hurt so much. I am so glad I have these guys looking out for me, aren't you? Yes, this is just one representative from Congress giving this address. Does this mean everyone else is on board? That the whole Republican Party establishment thinks this way? Well, let's listen to a clip from this very show, the Patrick Regan Show, coming out of this voice right here on May 13th. To set it up, I was discussing a speech by Mitt Romney and playing a short part of it that is extremely indicative of how these people are thinking. Listen to this next part and see how he sneaks this in right before the applause. And I will repeal and replace Obamacare. So you caught that. I will repeal and replace Obamacare. Not repeal and leave it at that. He wants to replace Obamacare. With what? Well, who knows? But you can be sure the government is going to have its nose in health care one way or the other. So you see, Democrat or Republican, they both want to ruin, oh, I'm sorry, run your life for you. They are all big government knows best type of people. But according to the radio address this week, the Republicans just won't screw you all over at once. They'll take their time doing it, which apparently is supposed to make you feel a little better about it. <laughs> it's the so, boiling frog, I it's call It's the boiling frog, the boiling exactly. Frog. Bring the heat up slowly. It won't jump out. Yeah. <laughs> Bo- both sides of this aisle, Democrat and Republican, are starting to sound a whole lot alike. To prove it, I have two clips here so you can compare them. Now, they don't sound completely the same. That's because the parties have some mild differences between them. Not much, but just enough to sound slightly different. First, we'll listen to the Democrat side. Okay, now... We'll listen to the Republican side. Well, I must have screwed up here. I must have the wrong clips. Tori, I don't know. Did that sound like just a couple of jackasses, or was that me? No, that sounded, sounded right to me. Okay. I just, you know, I wish I'd had the clips of both the Democrats and the Republicans. But but I guess all I had, I'd loaded them up wrong, and I just have a couple of jackasses making a lot of noise. <laughs> no, so. you pretty much have it right. <laughs> <laughs> Survey says. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. All right, I, I guess the lesson to take from this is that both sides of the aisle want to interfere with your life. So why not start letting them know they need to start finding something else to do besides bothering people? And what better way than to start calling and or emailing their offices and bothering them and their staffers until they start butting out of our lives. You can also start voting them out of offices each election, but just be sure you're not, you're not voting in another one of these. Do you, do you think that might start generating some calls to station management, Tory? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe from some congressional you, offices. You might be insulting the the donkey there, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm giving the donkey a bad name. <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's a good thing I own the show. That way, I guess I could take my time slot away, but you know, they they can't really take the show away. <laughs> At least you know, and and the listeners will know. This show, we do not compromise on our principles, even if our elected representatives are going to. Speaking of, but that's kind of all I had to say about that address, and I think that pretty much says it all. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, but, nutshell. 